one gigabyte per second rolls off the tongue with visions of bliss. 10 gigabytes per second is something only few people dream about, but it is now well within our reach. Blazing fast internet speeds is everything that we all want and getting there requires two things, a 10 gigabytes per second connection from your local internet service provider and a damn good gaming router that can support such mammoth internet speeds. TP-Link's Archer GE800 tri-band Wi-Fi 7 gaming router to handle just that. On the ISP front, we are using Starhub's ultra speed 10 gigabytes per second, so thank you Starhub. We will of course be running speed tests and see how online multiplayer performs with this in a bit with the MSI Cell 60 AI Studio, iPhone 16, the Samsung S24 Ultra, the Oppo Find X8 Pro, the Xiaomi 14T Pro, and even the latest PS5 Pro. Again, all of which are equipped with Wi-Fi 7 antennas, so we are using them for the best results, but before we get into those, let's get into specs of this router. Out of the box, you will get the GE800 router, the power adapter, an RJ45 Ethernet cable, a reset tool, and quick installation guide. There are a collection of LAN ports, one 10 gigabytes per second WAN slash LAN, another 10 gigabytes per second SFP plus slash RJ45 combo WAN LAN for 10 times faster data transfer speeds. And it's how TP-Link touts this router for speeds of up to 19 gigabytes per second, which is hella insane by the way. You have four 2.5 gigabytes per second LAN ports that have aggregated speeds of 5 gigabytes per second and a USB 3.0 port. This thing looks sleek as heck and would not look out of place in say Cyberpunk 2077. And speaking of which, the GE800 is the perfect router to future-proof your home or workplace because internet speeds get faster and faster year on year and that's exactly what the two 10 gig ports are for. Besides the ports, this is also fitted with a quad-core CPU, a one-click acceleration button and eight pre-optimized antennas to to ensure you properly leverage the ultra fast internet speeds and to make dead zones a thing of the past with TP-Link's proprietary Wi-Fi optimization and beam forming technology. And there's also easy mesh support for other TP-Link routers and installation is super easy with the Tether app or web UI. The question in your mind right now is what the quad-core CPU is for. With its two gigs of RAM, it helps to handle and manage the mammoth speeds on multiple devices so you can have legendary LAN parties, whether it's for mobile or PC gaming. This goes further being able to support multi-link operation tech or ML Low, that uses all three bands available, 6 GHz, 5 GHz, and 2.4 GHz to get that extremely fast 19 gigs per second. But we're not done because they've managed to bring down latency issues with a four times reduction from Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, but we are not done. With all these insane features, the router goes a step further with three easy ways to reduce your ping. One of the 2.5 GB per second LAN ports is a dedicated gaming port. Once you plug in your preferred gaming device, it is instantly prioritized over other devices so it doesn't have to fight for bandwidth with the other devices. And plugging it in also enables game application boost and game server acceleration. But what are those things? Well, game application boost will automatically detect and optimize game packets within the router's traffic handling and its DPI library or deep packet inspection library. And said library is just stupid vast because it can identify up to 250 games like Call of Duty, Apex Legends, Counter-Strike 2, League of Legends, Fortnite, and so much more. The G800 will prioritize prioritize bandwidth for these games and you do all of this by enabling quality of service or QoS and hitting game mode in the Tether app or the web UI. The third option is enabling gaming acceleration by way of What the Fast, which is a gamer private network that provides the shortest path for you, the player, to the game server. There is a one month free trial included with your purchase of the G800 and it supports multiple platforms and 122 games. You don't need to download additional apps, you just hit the acceleration button on the front of the router and you're good to go. That means less lag and latency issues and having your internet connection on par with your IRL reactions. Which is great because you know how frustrating things can be if you know things don't sync up. Let's get to testing with the MSI Stealth 16 AI Studio as well as a bunch of the latest 2024 smartphones on the market that support Wi-Fi 7. Taha is our ISP and we're in our Wi-Fi 7 6 gigahertz connection over here. Geekculture.co slash 6G so let's click go. So these are some great results so far. We're at 2800.23 megabits per second for download and 1865.96 megabits per second for the upload. So let's move on to our other devices. We are going to be testing with the Oppo Find X8 Pro next. Starhub's our ISP and we're connected to the Starhub server. And also we're connected to the Geek Culture 6GHz connection over here. 
So for the Oppo Find X8 Pro, download speeds are 2,759 megabits per second, while the upload speeds are 2,040 megabits per second. And I think that's slightly better than the MSI. Let's move on to the S24 Ultra. We have the Samsung S24 Ultra in our hands right now. Again, we're connected to Starhub and Starhub servers, and we're connected to the six gigahertz connection over here. So let's get started with the test. The S24 isn't as impressive as the MSI or the Oppo with download speeds of 1535 megabits per second and upload speeds of 1363 megabits per second. Hmm, that is interesting. Let's move on to the iPhone 16. So we're on the speed test app right now for the iPhone 16 Plus. We are on Starhub, Starhub servers, and we are connected to the 6 gigahertz connection over here. Saying limited compatibility over here, and by that it means, you know, it just affects AirPlay and some other Apple features, but outside of that, Wi-Fi networks and everything are great. So let's start the test. So the Samsung S24 Ultra and the iPhone 16 Plus are kind of in the same boat in the sense that they aren't doing as well as the MSI or the Oppo with download speeds of 1502 megabits per second and upload speeds of 832 megabits per second. So that's what we have with the 16 Plus. So we have the Xiaomi 14T Pro and we're going to be testing out the speeds on this thing. Let's go to speed test real quick over here. And we are connected to Starhub. And before we start, we are connected to the 6G option over here. So let's check back in speed test. Let's change the server to Starhub. And with everything set, let's hit go. These are some very healthy numbers over here for the Xiaomi 14T Pro. For download speeds, we're at 2,645 megabits per second. And for upload, we are at 1,992 megabits per second. Our PS5 Pro is set up over here. We set up the disk drive on that side. So let's get started with the test. So we are in StarHub server over here and stops our ISP. So let's hit go. The PS5 Pro's download speeds are 943.68 megabits per second and the upload speeds at 798.77 megabits per second. So PlayStation actually has their own network tester. So let's run that and compare results. Okay, so we're going to hit test internet connection. So based on this, the connection speed of the PS5 Pro is actually down by 100 plus megabits per second and the connection speed is down by about 500 plus megabits per second. So the possible reason why the connection speeds for the download and upload speeds in the PlayStation Network test are different is probably because it's connecting to the PlayStation servers. That's the best I can come up with right now. But besides that, this is what you're going to get with the PlayStation Network test. And this concludes our test with 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi 7 on the TP link GE800. Before we get into gaming, let's switch over our Wi-Fi connections real quick to the one with MLO. Just like that. A very healthy 3 to 4 ping. God damn it. Bye bye. Burn loss. My shots are landing where they need to land. It looks like everyone's just spawning on my right for some reason. Bye bye. Oh man, okay. Oh, okay. As you can see, so far I play all right. No issues whatsoever. Doing okay. Very nice. Kind of locked in right now. We're at six. Oh, oh no, no, no. Oh, okay, that's a good run though. But yeah, I've not really seen my meters go in the red at all for this entire round thus far. We're still on like 4, 3 ping-ish. Things are looking pretty good still. I can safely say this is one of the smoothest matches of CS I've played. Given that, you know, my internet connection at home isn't exactly as fast as the one I'm using right now. Let's try out Black Ops 6. So we're playing on Nuketown 24-7. The dudes right here. Very nice. As you can see, I've not seen any drop, no packet loss whatsoever. Oh my lord, that would have been beautiful. Oh. 
get screwed, my guy. And I'm reacting as I should. Oh boy. As you can see, 0% pack loss still, 3 NMS. Things very consistent thus far. My shots, my reactions are being inputted as needed. Very nice. <laughs> oh, that's what you call a run. There's someone downstairs. Right here. Latency has been extremely steady from like 38 to like 37 ish. It's been great so far. And I even got best play. Look at that. That is beautiful. Look at that. Oh, man. Hell yeah. All right. So that concludes the test for CS2 and Black Ops 6. And this. Poof. This baby goes for 999 Singapore dollars, which is pretty great in the long run with all its features and for the purpose of future proofing, it's quite the investment for the next couple of years. And of course, it's not just for gamers, but creatives who need to shift huge files around online, whether it's for designs, videos, documents, etc. Having an extremely high speed internet connection never hurt anybody, but if you're looking for something more affordable with a slight nerf to performance, the GE550 will be right up your alley at 399 SGD. That's a huge drop in price. And this offers five gigabytes per second connectivity with tri-band Wi-Fi 7 speeds of up to 9,220 megabytes per second with MLO. All in all, the GE800 is super easy to set up, has easy mesh support with other TP-Link routers like this one over here. You got ports for days, up to 19 gigabytes per second speech, which is absurdly fast, multi-link operation or MLO, priority for games, reduced latency and lag, a dedicated gaming port and gamer server acceleration via what the fast at the click of a button on the router. This is every gamer's dream and goal to achieve the fastest speeds possible to get the best gaming experience ever and the GE800 E800 is everything I ever wanted and probably something you've always wanted too. I mean, just imagine deleting and downloading games that you want to play just like that and you save on hard disk space because you can totally do that now without, you know, missing a beat. I have to reiterate that you definitely need your ISP's fastest internet speeds of 10 gigabytes per second or it just wouldn't work. If your ISP or internet service provider, in case you forgot, doesn't provide such high speeds, then opt for the GE550 instead because what you want is a router that will prioritize your gaming experience more than anything. A quad-core CPU with 2 gigs of RAM on both models is still insane to me. Anyway, what do you guys think? Will you be getting the G800 to future-proof your homes or nah? Or Will you be getting the GE550 instead? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any tips or thoughts, leave them there too. I do love reading all of them. If you like what we do, make sure to follow us on all of our socials right here. We post up stuff every single day. And if you like this video, maybe hit the like and subscribe button. It keeps the lights on here for us and is a big help. This has been Zin. And if you want to see more stuff, check this out.